On the last video, I created the state, the actions, and the reducers for the logging functionality of the logging screen for our real delivery app using React Native. Now, let's actually implement the logging with Redux State Management. What's happening now when I click on the login button is that I call the handle submit function of Formic, which calls the login function that I have created, which simply takes the user to the home screen without doing any authentication. What we should actually do is, on the click of the login button, we will continue calling the handle submit function of Formic, which will call the login function that I created, which will then call the login action of the login state. With this change on the state, we'll call the authentication service with the email and password. In case the authentication service responds with success, then we call the login success action and redirect the user to the home screen. In case the authentication service responds with an error, then we call the login fail action and show the error message. So let's do this with TDD. Let me first tell NPM to run my tests and rerun them every time I change the code. As all my tests are passing, let's go to the login.screen.test.js file and create a new test. It should show the loading component and start logging in when the user is trying to log in. So I should start by rendering the screen, then I'll set a valid email, then I'll set a valid password, then I'll click on the login button, then I'll expect that the login state has the is logging in property equal to true, and also I'll expect that the loading state has the show property equal to true. So let's render the screen by creating a constant called screen that will receive the rendering of the login screen. I'll create a new constant called email that will receive from the screen the element with the test ID email. Then I will fire an event to change the text of that email to a valid email. I'll now create a new constant called password that will receive from the screen the element with the test ID password. Then I will fire an event to change the text of that password to a valid password. Now I'll create a new constant called login button that will receive from the screen the element with the test ID login button. Then I'll fire an event to press on that login button. Now I'll expect that on the store, when I get its state, the login state will have the is login in property equal to true. Also, I'll expect that on the store, when I get its state, the loading state will have the show property equal to true. Let's also make this test asynchronous. I'll add the async function to the test and I'll wait for those instructions to happen. Without this, our test would fail because the code is asynchronous, but the test wasn't asynchronous, so it would wait for the instructions to execute and it would fail. After I save this, our test will fail. It fails because I'm not changing the login state when the user clicks on the login button. I'm just sending the user to the home screen. So instead of doing the navigation, I will have to dispatch the login action. So let's get to the dispatch of the login action. I'll come to the constant that maps the dispatches to the screen properties and I'll add a new element called login that will receive the login action. Now that the login action is mapped to the dispatch of the login screen properties, I can go to the login screen props interface and add a new element called login of the type function. And now on the login function, I can simply tell the props to call the login function which will dispatch the login action. After I save this, our test will still fail. Actually, now we have two tests failing, this new test that I just created and a node test that I created some videos ago. This old test was expecting that it should go to the home page on login. Well, now we are not just sending the user to the home screen, we are authenticating the user before doing this redirect, so it fails. I could actually refactor this test, but I'll just remove it as we are building the login with Redux and we are gonna for sure come back to the situation that this test is actually testing, that the user should go to the home screen when the authentication succeeds. After I save this, our test will fail. Our new test is failing because we are not showing the loading component when the user is logging in. So let's do this. I'll go back to the login screen file and I'll create a new useEffect hook 
and this use effect hook, we'll be observing on the screen props the logging state with the is logging in property. This right here means that this code will be executed every time the is logging in property of the logging state changes. So now I can just check if the logging state has the is logging in property equal to true. If it does, then I can just call the dispatch of the show loading action. After I save this, our test will pass. Let's then go to the actual app and test it. After I put a valid email, a valid password, and I click on the login button, what happens is that we dispatch the login action, then the is logging in property of the login state becomes true, and because of this we show the loading component. But we are not doing anything after this. What we should do is to call the authentication service to actually do the login. If it succeeds, then we call the login success action and send the user to the home screen. If not, then we show an error message. So let's make a test for the success case. I will create a new test that it should hide the loading component and redirect the user to the home screen when the login is successful. So I'll have to render the screen, then I'll try to log in by setting a valid email and password and clicking on the login button. Then I'll expect that the user is logged in. I will also expect that the loading is hidden and finally that the user was redirected to the home screen. The first two steps we have done on the previous test, so let me just copy and paste it. Let's remember also that I have to make this test asynchronous, so I'll add async to the test. And now I'll wait for the asynchronous call. I'll expect that on the store, when I get the whole state, the logging state will have the property is logged in as true. Also, I'll expect that on the store, when I get the whole state, the loading state will have the property show as false. And finally, I will expect that the object navigation had its navigate function to have been called with the string home. I'll also create a constant called navigation that will be an object that has a function called navigate. That function doesn't need to do anything. Now we need to spy on the navigation's function navigate. I also pass this navigation to the rendering of the login screen, so the login screen has access to it. With this, I'm observing the navigate function and checking later if it was called. After I save this, our test will fail. It fails because I'm not doing anything when the user tries to log in. We can see it by this code where the only thing we do when the user is trying to log in is to show the loading component. What you do is, the same way as we did for the recover password, call the authentication service with the login function. This function doesn't exist yet, so let's create it. I will create a function called login, which will receive the email as a string and the password as a string. This function will return a promise of the type user. So I will return a new promise of the type user and I will get the resolve and reject parameters of that promise. I will now set a timeout of three seconds. And then I'll check if the email is equal to error at email.com. If it is, then I will make the promise return an error and I'll put the message error as user not found. Otherwise, I will create a constant called user that will be of the type user and it will be initialized with an object that has the email and also it has some user ID. And now I'll make the promise return the new user. So now let's make the call to the login service. To do this, I will need access to the user's email and password. So how do we do that? When the user presses the login button, those values are sent to the handle submit function, which sends them to the on submit function, which sends it to the login function. So on the login function, I can get access to it by receiving those parameters as the user login object which will be of a hidden type that has an email as a string and a password as a string. I could actually send the email and password to the login action and put it on the login state, but in my opinion, they don't need to be part of the login state. So I'll just use the local state of the login screen. I'll create a constant that is an array that has the user login and the set user login. It will receive the use state hook from React, and I'll initialize those properties with an object that has the email as an empty string 
and the password also as an empty string. Now I can save this state locally on my login screen by calling the set user login function with the user login parameter received by the login function. Now that the email and password are being stored on the local state, then I can go back to my authservice.login function and use them as parameters. Then, in case that service responds successfully, I will need to call the login success action. So let's get access to the login success action. To do this, I'll go to my constant called map dispatch to props and create a new property called login success that will receive the login success action. And now I'll go to the login screen props and add the login success dispatcher as a function to it. Now on the login success response of the login service, I can just tell the props to dispatch the login success action and send to it the user. After I save all of this, our test will fail. It fails because of the second expectation. I'm not hiding the loading component after the user logs in successfully. To do this, I'll add another use effect hook that will respond on the login state to the is logged in property. If on the login state the is logged in property is true, then I'll hide the loading component. After I save this, our test will fail. It fails now because I'm expecting that the user is redirected to the home screen, but I'm not doing that. So I'll add another instruction here on this use effect hook in order to tell the navigation to call the navigate function with the string home. After I save this, our test will pass. All right, let's take a look at the app itself. I'll set a valid email and any password and click on the login button. After three seconds, the service responds with success and the user gets redirected to the home screen. Well, pretty amazing. Now let me go back to the login screen and let's take a look at the error case. I'll set the error email, any password and click on the login button. We are showing the loading component. After three seconds, the service answers, but we are not doing anything with that error answer. What we have to do here is to call the login fail action, hide the loading component and show an error message. I'll add a new test that should hide the loading component and show an error message when the login fails. First, I'll render the screen and try to log in. Then I'll expect that the user is not logged in. I'll also expect that the loading component is not being shown. And I'll expect that an error message was shown. The first part of the rendering the screen and trying to log in is already done, so let me just copy and paste it here. Now I'll remove the navigation and I'll also change the email to the error email. Now let's make this test asynchronous by adding the async to the test. And now I'll wait for the expectation. So I'll expect that the store, when I get its state, the login state has the is login in property as false. I'll expect also that the store, when I get its state, the loading state has the show property as false. I'll also try to get on the screen by test ID the login fail component. With this instruction, we'll have an error in case the test can't find any element with the login fail test ID. After I save this, our test will fail. It fails because we didn't change the login state on the error case, so the login state keeps having the is login in property as true. What we need to do is to call the login fail action when there is an error on the login service. So we change the login state to be in the error state. To do this on the auth service.login response, I'll catch any error response. Then I'll execute a function that has as the parameter the error response. Now I have to call the login fail action, so let's get access to it. I'll add on the map dispatch to props constant a new element called login fail that will receive the login fail action. Now I'll add to the login screen props the login fail of the type function. After doing this, I have access to the dispatch of the login fail action. Now I can call on the error instruction the login fail dispatcher and send to it as parameter the error. After I save this, our test will fail. It fails now because we keep showing the loading component on the screen, so we need to hide it. 
To do this, I need to watch on the logging state the is logging in property. If the user is not logging in anymore, then I can call the hide action of the loading component. Here on this use effect hook, I am already watching this property and doing some action when the is logging in is true. When it changes to false, then I'll hide the loading component. After I save this, our test will keep failing. Now it fails because the element with the test ID login fail doesn't exist, so let's fix this error. Here below I'm showing an error message every time there is an error on the login state. What I should do here is, instead of creating one snack bar for the recovery password error and another one for the login error, I'll just treat them together here. So if there is an error, I'll create a snack bar with the test ID error message, so we can use it for both cases. Now, instead of searching for the login fail element, I'll search for the error message element. Also, not to break the other tests, I'll change the search for the recover password fail element to error message element. After I save all of this, our test will pass. Let's now check how it's going on the app itself. I will put the error email and some password. When I click on the login button, the loading component shows up, then it gets hidden and the error message shows up. Remember that the code called the login action then the login service, and then it called the login fail action. Now I'll put a valid email and click on the login button. The loading component shows up, it disappears, and the user is taken to the home screen. With this, we finish the state management for the login page. On the next video, we are going to continue the development of our app by creating a database on Firestore and we are going to actually connect our service to that database and we are going to actually do a real login. So hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel in case you're not subscribed yet but you want to follow the development of this real app, share this video with your dev friends and see you on the next video.